Well, Swante Arrhenius was a Swedish physicist and chemist, and he was one of the first scientists who defined what an acid and base are. So, according to him, an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in solution. So, let's take an example and understand what this means. So he said acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in solution. So let's say I have hydrochloric acid, aqueous, and if it dissociates, uh, it should produce, well this is a reversible reaction, it should produce hydrogen ions and chloride ions, Cl-. minus. And he called this substance acid because it has the ability to produce H plus ions in solution. So that's what an Arrhenius acid is. It can produce hydrogen ions in solution. And then he said a base is some, a substance that can produce hydroxide ions hydroxide ions. So let's take an example and try to understand again what this means. So if I have sodium hydroxide aqueous dissolved in water, so it dissociates to produce sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So this is the hydroxide ion. OH minus. So since sodium hydroxide, the name itself tells us, since sodium hydroxide can produce these ions in solution, Arrhenius called these substances like these as a base. So sodium hydroxide is a base because if you put it in water, add it to water, you get hydroxide ions or OH minus ions in water. Now let's go further and understand what happens when we react HCl and NaOH. This is a very familiar reaction to many of you. So let's say I have HCl aqueous and react it with NaOH aqueous. And this is very familiar. We are saying this is an acid because it can produce H plus ions. This is a base. It produces OH minus ions, giving salt plus water, H2O. So that's our salt. But what exactly happens at the ionic level? So let's take a look at this. So when we say acid and base react, these are the two ions that are reacting here. So the H plus ions from the acid react with the OH minus ions from the base. So the OH minus ions from the base, they react together to produce. So that's H plus OH minus. They basically cancel out and forming H2O, which is a neutral substance. That's why we call this process as neutralization. Now the reason why it's called neutralization is because it's forming a neutral substance. The hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions react together to form a neutral substance called water. That's why it's neutralization. So you can pretty much explain Arrhenius theory using this example because in this case we can call hydrochloric acid as an Arrhenius acid because it can produce H plus ions in solution. And similarly, we can call sodium hydroxide as an Arrhenius base because it can produce hydroxide ions in solution. But there is one limitation, and here is the problem with Arrhenius theory. But if I take another base, uh, let's say I have HCl, aqueous, and let's say I'm reacting with a different base, and let's call that as ammonia ammonia aqueous. Well, we get NH4Cl, but the question is, well, hydrogen, hydrochloric acid is still an Arrhenius acid. It can produce hydrogen ions in solution, but here 
we are not able to explain that ar uh, ammonia is a Arrhenius base because you don't see any hydroxide ions. There are no OH minus ions. So how can we explain that according to Arrhenius theory if this is a neutralization reaction? So to do that we have to take a slightly different example. So in that case I have to take ammonia. Let's take ammonia aqueous and in water So in that case, what happens is it forms NH4 plus and OH minus. Now this is a better example. So now we can say ammonia is an Arrhenius base because if it, if you dissolve, well, if you add or react ammonia, well, it doesn't really react. It simply dissociates. So here we can call ammonia as an Arrhenius base. So now you can see when it is in water, it produces hydroxide ions. So we can call ammonia as an Arrhenius base using this example than this one. Because here we don't see any OH minus ions or hydroxide ions. Whereas when you have ammonia in water, you can see the production of hydroxide ions. So if you use this example with ammonia and hydrochloric acid, you may not be able to explain if ammonia is an Arrhenius base because you don't see OH minus ions. But rather, if you use this example of ammonia in water, you can actually see the formation of hydroxide ions. So since this forms hydroxide ions, we can call ammonia as an Arrhenius base.